I haven't done a month long art challenge in so long, but it's finally time. We're starting Peachtober. How gorgeous is this new sketchbook we're using? First, I'm gonna make a start on the title page. I did Peachtober last year and Inktober the year before. They're all in playlists on my channel. I have looked at the Inktober prompt list for this year and they're all kind of themed around camping. So that decided it for me, we're doing Peachtober. Are you taking part in an art challenge? I'd love to know in the comments. And also, what did you think of the themed Inktober prompts this year? Like before, this challenge will be split up into four four weeks, so four videos. Personally, I find that this makes each video a nice watchable size. Every day is a bit overwhelming and one big video would be like well over an hour long. So I like this format, but let me know what you think. This year, I'm gonna be using any medium. It's the first time not restricting myself to using ink because there's a lot of mediums I'd like to try in art styles and subjects I haven't yet. And I haven't really made very much art this year. Now that the time title page is done, we need to move on to the first prompt. I haven't looked at any of the prompts yet. They came out this morning and I wanted to wait so we could do it together. The first prompt is Daisy. We're not gonna draw a daisy. Not just a daisy, we're not gonna do it like that. But combining it with an object could be really cool. Something cute like some flowers growing out of something like... I do have nostalgia on my list, I want to include that. I've got a couple of things that I would like to include in this challenge. And I just thought something like flowers growing out of a DS could be really cool. Let's see what we make. We're missing some markers so I'm just gonna quickly pop those away. I'm scared to get started but let's do this. I grabbed this gorgeous purple shade and we're filling the entire background. At the moment, it's looking kind of like negative space, but we'll soon be filling in everything. I don't have much experience at all with alcohol markers, so for this October art challenge, I'd like to try and figure out how to use them. We're starting off strong, using them for literally the first prompt. Oh, yes smart probably not i've wanted to create art themed around nostalgia for quite some time now i've seen a lot of nostalgia on instagram and it's making me want to draw my own we're drawing daisies growing out of a nintendo ds light this sunflower ahuhu shade is literally perfect for these daisies. I mean, I'm not completely sure I didn't look at a reference. It's a bad trait. I'm grabbing the lightest pink shade that I own, and really it could have been lighter. I'm thinking I may need a pastel set of markers in future. Alcohol markers can always layer darker, but never lighter. So those lighter shades really are needed. Now reaching for these random alcohol markers I got for Christmas because there aren't many, but they are technically a pastel set. One was too dark and the other pretty much non-existent. I chose the non-existent one to try and add some definition to the petals, but you can see that once it dries it literally adds nothing. This drawing is quite patchy, but I'm learning to accept it and not go too crazy blending because I'm never going to achieve the blends that I can with watercolour and we've got a lot to get through. There's 31 prompts in this challenge. The second prompt is... Sparkle. Sparkle. Oh, this could be a good opportunity to do a portrait. I don't know if watercolor is really going to work in the sketchbook we're using, but I would like to do a portrait in alcohol markers. So maybe we could do that for Sparkle. Putting those markers back and reaching for some skin tones. There aren't many in this set, but we're going to try our best. For the prompt sparkle, we're drawing a portrait. They're my favorite to draw, so if there's ever an opportunity, that's what we'll do. Still being super bold and attempting to draw an entire portrait with a new medium, which was a bad move. It's patchy as anything, and I found it difficult to make it unpatchy, like I couldn't. Pink hair and a different technique to what I'm used to, trying to add highlights and shadows in blocks. I guess this is what we did for the giveaway painting. 
And if you'd like to enter the giveaway, there is still time. I'll leave it down below in the description. I think the best way to learn is to just try these things. I'm still pretty new to alcohol and acrylic markers, but the best way to figure out how to use them is to just do it. And I think art challenges are the perfect opportunity for this. Okay, I'm getting deja vu. I've made a video about this before. I still stand by it though. There's a lot of positives of doing monthly challenges. We need sparkle. I'm grabbing some metallic watercolor to add some shine. I've had these paints for years and I honestly love them so much. I mean, they were pretty cheap, but they work really well. Obviously, we've got many necklaces and some earrings. Then I tried to add some shimmer to the skin to look like makeup and that didn't really work. I think maybe this gold shade was a little bit too light. I have done this before and it's worked really well, but I think that time I might have gone for a more subtle look. Adding silver to the blue spirals and a nose ring that I almost completely forgot. And now it's done. There might be more that I could have done, but we need to move on to prompt number three. The third prompt? Poor. That's odd. Well... An animal or a paw print on like a landscape. I'll get planning, let's see what we make. And we're drawing the landscape of some paw prints on a beach. Can you believe just how much bleed through there is? We've pretty much lost the entire sketches. We're using mixed media for this piece and there is no plan. There were ideas and they all changed along the way. First I thought of watercolour, then neo colours and collage, but for this challenge we're really just going with the flow. I decided to use water-based markers, but to do this we need to use alcohol markers first because it would take forever to fill this entire page with just a water marker. Once everything's all blocked in, I'm reaching for those water-based markers to add in some patterns. Swirls in the clouds, a spiral sun, some grass and patterns in the sea. Beaches are my comfort zone when it comes to landscapes because it's where I often go plein air painting. So even though we're using random supplies in a crazy way, I'm not feeling too lost. Reaching for the only brown shades I have in this set, obviously it's not going to look perfect. And with that, we're going to add some collage. I'm looking for paper with a subtle pattern and this pad is perfect. It's my favourite one. I'm trying out the new cutting board and craft knife that you might have seen in my latest haul and we're cutting the tiniest little paws. I had no clue whether or not this would work, whether I'd actually be able to cut in circles, that's still undecided, and whether it would look like the paws were actually disappearing into the distance. I'm gluing in all the tiny little pieces now and honestly, I think this one turned out much better than I thought. I really hope you like it. The fourth prompt is sky. That's a landscape. We're going to do a landscape and maybe surreal. We could make it surreal. That could be quite cool. Yeah. We're starting with a cup of tea. Of course, I'm addicted and some toast because nobody wants to see my shaky hands. Today, we're reaching for gouache and the sketch is looking very random. I asked for some ideas on the live stream and we've got a rainbow, sunset, night sky, and floating islands. So this is going to be one surreal landscape. I haven't used this gouache palette in ages, probably not for an entire year. This palette is filled with dry gouache and I kind of stopped using it because it cracked into pieces everywhere. I have since heard that it's better to just add a little bit of gouache so that any future gouache has something to stick to, but that's not very helpful now. Now we have a messy palette with chunky bits of gouache everywhere. I don't know what style we're going for today. We're just filling in those base colours and hoping that layering is going to somehow pull this together. I wanted this piece to be fun and colourful, so we're adding clouds that don't look anything like clouds. And I'm not sure these islands are looking anything like islands either. Okay, this isn't working. Neo colors to the rescue. 
I've got a lot of fun colours now. Some are actually brand new from my birthday haul, which will be coming soon. Popping down some swirls and adding highlights back to the islands. Did this work? What do you think? I don't know. My partner really likes this painting, but I don't. Moving on to the fifth prompt now. Fawn. 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 Isn't that like a little deer? Or it's kind of an emotion, isn't it? I don't know about this one. I feel like the deer root could be really cool. But I'm going to leave this one quite open-ended. We'll see what we create. I thought about lots of different ideas for this one. Different ways that fawn could be represented. But at the end of the day, deer are cute. Why not just draw a deer? I'm reaching for India ink because the idea was to draw a cute little baby deer with a parent behind as a silhouette. However, this took a few big turns, as you'll see. I'm adding the line work for this large deer and realizing that this pen does not seem to hold as much ink as I remember. Maybe it's because we're using a lot and this paper is big, but it didn't seem to last long at all. I also think I might have been a little bit too heavy handed because unfortunately some of it did go through the page. This paper seems to pill quite easily and it really isn't great. It's a shame because the front cover is so cute. I made some mistakes because the ink always takes longer to dry than I think it does. I did this a lot for Inktober. I used India ink for all 31 prompts and pretty much every single one has mistakes in it. My plan was always to add trees to the background. Well, you know how I said I made some mistakes? I accidentally dunked my hand in the ink a few times and smudge the edge of the deer onto the white page. I had the crazy idea of using my fingers and thumbs to try and make markings, and honestly, it worked. We've made a huge mess, let's go clean up. It was at this point that I thought, why not just continue? Use India ink for the whole piece. Kind of like an homage to Inktober, why not have one ink piece every time? I'm using these diluted bottles of ink. Yes, they are just old medicine bottles, but I've just added water and they work perfectly for this deer. Now for the sixth prompt, sketch. Okay, we've got to draw art supplies. Surely, right? Surely, surely we've got to draw art supplies. A nice cute scene, maybe a little bit like lo-fi. Let's do it. Giving the gouache another try, and unfortunately, this is the huge black mark that we have to somehow cover up. I had thought of using watercolour, but this kind of decides it. It has to be gouache. And it all works out, because this is my favourite one so far. First up is the base layer, and we need to cover the entire page with cute, unique pastel colours. This is an artist studio, so the wall is hand painted with swirls, there's art up on the wall and it's all super cosy. The desk is looking far more organised than mine looks most of the time, and this one is inspired by all of those lo-fi scenes. The concept for sketch is that an artist is in the process of painting a portrait over this sketch and this snapshot has been taken halfway through. So half the face is simply a graphite sketch whilst the other half has already been painted. And honestly, this art space isn't looking too different from my own. It's getting there and I can't wait to show you. The making an art studio from scratch video is almost complete. It's gonna be a big edit. It is long. I think I will finish filming that video soon, but there's a lot more I'd like to do with my art studio. There will be a lot of fun projects in future because I mean, I have a house now. Let's paint it. Let's fill the walls with murals just because we can. Yeah, this painting is looking an awful lot like the corner in my own studio now. I was hoping that we'd be able to stick a nice blue or teal shade of paint on the middle part of the wall because that contrasts nicely, but unfortunately, as you'll see, that just ends up getting lighter and lighter. The blue wasn't opaque enough to cover up literal black ink, so it's gonna have to be lots of layers of white mixed in too. I didn't cave immediately, just a little bit here and there, and now we're reaching for those colour pencils. 
Defining the borders like the picture frame, clock, canvas, window and adding in some texture. This painting has a painterly look to it, which I love. I love that it kind of looks like a lo-fi scene of a room. So that's why I haven't blended anything too much. And this is how the final piece turned out. And the final prompt of the first week is bud. Haven't we had bud before? I feel like we had one quite similar last year, a flower. But you could do anything really, couldn't you? Anything that's kind of young, maybe? I'm gonna get sketching, let's see what we make. Next, we're on Neo colors and attempting to use them with water, which I haven't properly tried yet. And another thing I've never done is sharpen them. But can you believe just how much of the pastel comes off to get it to this sharp point? I'm saving the sharpening since it seems so wasteful to just throw it away. The prompt is bud and we're keeping this one super simple. I like to plan in easy pieces to give myself a little bit of a break. That doesn't mean this piece was easy to create though. The biggest part is giving myself leeway to create something more simple. If you're aiming to create 31 mind-blowing pieces of art one after the other, it's likely you'll get burnt out. For this idea, we're drawing two flower buds in a vase with a checkered background. But this is actually a really cool concept because there's two buds. Can you see them? My friend Susie from Susie Neverland came up with the idea of having the two plants holding hands or leaves like they're buds. We're gonna go ahead and add some water to this design. These are the Neocolor 2 Aquarelle pastels, which means that they can activate with water and become like a gouache consistency. Moving on to the background now, and the plan is to keep that dry and looking like traditional Neocolor pastels. And even though it creates a different art style to what I use for other mediums, it really is a lot of fun. Unfortunately though, I kept accidentally smudging this piece with my fingers, so each white block ended up looking a little bit messy. Whilst the art didn't end up like I hoped it would, I think using the pastels with water is a really cool technique, and it's gonna take a lot of practice to make something good. That's the first week of prompts all done. I'm super excited to see what else we create. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one. I'll see you on Sunday for a new video. And then I'll meet you back here again on Thursday. Bye-bye.